imagine if this happened at this particular time and all this. And when it could have really just been that they forgot to um, close a loop correctly or break themselves out of a loop or just, you know, put a semicolon. A lot of times people attribute to maliciousness what can easily be attributed to incompetence, right? So we always think, oh, this person's trying to do this when it, it might just be that it was just a little bit of incompetence. Welcome to another episode of The Bug Bite, hosted by your truly tech coach, Ralph, where we are engineered to win. In today's episode, we are going to address an issue that took place last week, a major, major outage. Which outage was this? This was the AT&T outage that took place on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024 at approximately 5.30 a.m. in the morning. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So I didn't even know that this outage was taking place, but on Thursdays, I have a jujitsu class at 6.30 in the morning, 6.30, yeah, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And as we're leaving class, one of the, one of the um, other students asked me like, hey, what phone service do you have? I'm like, I have T-Mobile. And they said, uh, is your phone working? And I, I realized I left my phone in the car, but um, someone else said, like, oh, no, my phone isn't working. I don't have any service. It says SOS. And I'm like, really? So um, on my way there, I was like, my data was working fine. So I don't I don't think that my phone had any any issues. But this seems to have primarily affected AT&T. I heard some people on T-Mobile might have been affected, uh, but I'm not entirely sure about all the details. But I want to read through it to find out what's going on. Many people said, hey, this might be a cybersecurity attack. You know how people, like, they, they automatically jump to different conclusions and stuff like that when things start to, you know, when weird things happen, like, you know, a provider can't have any issues. So we are going to find out a lot of times, right? I'm going to start it off like this. A lot of times people attribute to maliciousness what can easily be attributed to incompetence, right? So we always think, oh, this person's trying to do this when it, it might just be that it was just a little bit of incompetence. So we'll see, right? Let's jump in to our article to find out what exactly went on with the AT&T outage from last week. All right, so let's go. All right, so here we are. So this article is brought to us by the Associated Press. And it says, AT&T says the outage to its US cell phone network was not, I repeat, was not caused by a cyber attack okay because a lot of people are saying you know this could be a cyber attack it's gonna it could be massive and like like you know it, it might be a trial run who knows right uh and guess what? it might be that and it might be that they're covering it up but like i said i do not like to attribute maliciousness to what can be easily classified as incompetence all right so let's find out let's read into it to see what's going on and Let's let's see. Let's take a let's take a look at this video real quick. See what 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 it entails. The coverage restored to AT&T customers after outage. AT&T says it restored wireless coverage after an outage knocked out cell phone services on its network across the U.S. for hours. All right, so let's, let's, let's just get into the article. All right, it's only 20, a few seconds left. AT&T had more than 58,000 outages around noon Eastern time in locations including Houston, Atlanta. So far, no reason has been given. All right, so let's jump into the article, right? So this article is written by Michelle Chapman. All right, so it says, AT&T said the hours-long outage to its U.S. cell phone network Thursday appeared to be a result of a technical error and not a malicious attack. All right. So we started. It's not necessarily malicious maliciousness. It could just be, you know, technical issues, incompetence, etc. So the outage knocked out cell phone service for thousands of users across the United States starting early Thursday before it was restored. Right. And I heard from like just online I saw a lot of people who had this issues from Michigan to South Florida and probably in other and definitely in other places as well. So AT&T blamed the incident on an error in coding without elaborating. So they're already blaming the software engineers as it's so easy to do. There was a, an exception somewhere and you know, it was a software engineer's fault, All right? As 
Based on our initial review, we believe that today's outage was caused by the application and execution of an incorrect process used as we were expanding our network, not, I repeat, not a cyber attack, the Dallas-based company said. All right, it says outage tracker down detector noted that outages, which began at around 3.30 a.m. I thought it was 5.30, but it's actually 3.30 a.m. Eastern time, peaked at 73,000 reported incidents. AT&T, so if it's 73,000 reported incidents, I guess like there's probably hundreds of thousands more that weren't reported um, because some people are like, oh, it's, you know, whatever. AT&T had more than 58,000 outages around noon Eastern time in locations including Houston, Atlanta, Chicago, and I'm going to throw in there in in uh, Michigan as well, Detroit, Michigan, in South Florida. I know some people who are affected. The carrier is the largest, is the country's largest with more than 240 million subscribers. 240 million, you know, shout out to AT&T for their 240 million subscribers. <laughs> Cricket Wireless, which is owned by AT&T, by AT&T had more than 9,000 outages at one point, but the, but the reports had also tailed off later in the afternoon. Users of other carriers, including Verizon and T-Mobile, also reported issues, but those companies said their networks were operating normally and the problems were likely stemming from the customers trying to connect to AT&T users. So they're like, hey, Verizon's like, not our problem. T-Mobile's like, not us. That is all on you, AT&T. And sad for our customers who are trying to, to communicate with AT&T customers because maybe, maybe those customers, like <laughs> Verizon and T-Mobile's like, you know, if you don't want any outages ever, <laughs> right? You don't want any outages, you can come and join our team, right? If you want any outages, uh, just come and join Verizon or T-Mobile because then you can connect with people with, with seamlessly. But trust me, Verizon and T-Mobile definitely do have their own issues, right? So during the outage, some iPhone users saw SOS messages displayed in the status bar on their cell phones. You know, probably it's, it's displaying SOS makes it like a little bit more frantic because SOS is usually a call for help. And it's like, uh oh, what's going on? And then, and then people, a bunch of people just watched that movie. Uh, what was that? That was the uh, uh, Obama produced movie um, about the the end of the world or something. Like that. I forgot the name of it, but we we t we did a Tesla video on it the other day. But anyways, uh, it said during the outage, some some iPhone users saw SOS messages displayed in the status bar on their cell phones. The message indicates that the device is having trouble connecting to the cell to their cellular provider's network, but it can make emergency calls through other carrier networks, according to Apple support. You know, so like <laughs> the SOS message just means that it can't connect to their cell phone provider, but it does sound a bit scary when you see SOS across your phone. Like, uh oh, are we under attack? Is it a cyber attack? So the Federal Communi uh, Communications Commission contacted AT&T about the outage and the Department of Homeland Security and FBI were also looking into it, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said, right? So, and it's funny, right? Because now you have the, the Department of Homeland Security, you have the FBI looking into it, maybe the CIA, who knows? Who knows, right? Because the CIA never tells you what they're looking into. But it, it might have been as simple as somebody forgot to, like, and you see me do it all the time, right? It might have been as simple as somebody forgot to put a closing semicolon and then they went and took a coffee break while they were deploying code and they, and then, you know, they went home, who knows? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everything is down and they were like, oh man, was that Frappuccino really, really worth it at that moment in time, all right? So the FBI, uh, so the FBI acknowledged it had been in touch with AT&T. Should we learn of any, and I repeat, of any malicious activity, we will respond accordingly, the agency said. The outage also raised concerns on Capitol Hill. We are working to assess today's disruption in order to gain complete understanding of what went wrong and what can be done to prevent future incidents like this from occurring. Well, Mr. and Mrs. People on Capitol Hill, are you going to be doing code reviews on every single pull request that's opened at AT&T and at T-Mobile and at Verizon and at Cricket and at every other cell phone provider that exists? Hmm? Hmm? Because, you know, what? And, and not to mention, right, not only the pull requests, are you going to be doing penetration testing are you going to, I mean, you, you guys can't even secure your own places over there and you want to talk about 
talk about preventing future incidents from this from occurring when um yeah anyways anyways i digress all right so uh and, all right so let's read that one more time because i i went off on a tangent here and i apologize for that but you know when these when these po politicians try to make these policies that they have no idea what they're talking about it it, it just makes me laugh sadly laugh sadly if that makes any sense right anyways we are working to assess today's disruption in order to gain a complete understanding of what went wrong and what can be done to prevent future incidents like this from occurring, said a statement from uh, a statement issued from Kathy uh, McMorris Rogers, a Washington Republican who sits, um, who chairs the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and Ohio Republican Bob Latta, the chair of the Communications and Technology Sub committee all right so that is our article for today that is our episode of the bug bite all right so let's go back home to full screen all right so that is a story be like, i mean that's the story that's being told at least by at&t is that necessarily the case we don't know right um we we covered it an at&t outage from a long time ago maybe it was like 30 years ago uh, that this AT and T outage, and you know, it was it was a it was allegedly a software um, incident at that time. And this one, they're alleging to be a software incident, which is highly highly plausible. You know, most things are because they, they are software software related. Uh, you know, like I was saying, they, it's some bad code. Uh, I think the last one was because the way that they were handling um, like a, a switch statement and stuff like that. So things happen. Things happen. So. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of people are conspiracy theorists and say, oh my goodness, imagine if this happened at this particular time and all this. And when it could have really just been that they forgot to um, close a loop correctly or break themselves out of a loop or just, you know, put a semicolon, you know, and then they went to get their Frappuccino. And now we are having about 500,000 people with an outage across the United States. And people are in a frenzy panicking because, because they could not successfully send their next post, you know? So it is what it is. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Bug Bite. Hopefully you found it entertaining and interesting and informative, always informative. You know, that is my goal here to give you the information, but you know, with a little drop of honey of entertainment. And, um, you know, we go from there. So if you enjoyed it, please do me a big, big favor. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every single time that we go live. And if you need personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching from me, Sponsor Limited, go over to www.techcoachralph.dev where you can sign up for exclusive content that I do not put on YouTube, right? Uh, and, and it's like to help you, it's specifically guided to help you level up your technical skills, your career skills, all of that as well as sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching where we can work together to get your resume right, to prepare you for interviews, to um, you know put you on a plan that will help you level up, all right? So that's that. Thank you once again for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful Friday and a wonderful, absolutely wonderful weekend. Until next time, this is Tech Coach Ralph signing off. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.